everyone. My name is Amy Osherman, and I'm the head of archives and brand heritage at Herman Miller, and I'm here with Design Milk for DMTV Milkshake. Herman Miller is a 115-year-old furniture company based in Zealand, Michigan, and that's actually where I'm coming to you all from today. Uh, this is one of the first times I've been back in my office since we've been working from home uh, in quarantine. So I have my mask on that we're wearing out in our common areas, but back here, it is just me in the boxes. Um, I have some questions to get us started. I also selected a favorite vessel to choose them from. Uh, this is a bowl designed by Ward Bennett for Sasaki from the early 1980s. Ward also designed furniture for a company called Geiger that is now part of the Herman Miller family. So if you're not familiar with Ward's work, check it out. This bowl is amazing. So first question. How and when did you become interested in being a design archivist? Um, my background is in libraries and my first job out of library school was at the Indianapolis Museum of Art working as an archives assistant. Um, the IMA acquired the Miller House and Garden. It's located in Columbus, Indiana and as part of the collection. Um, that house was designed by Aero Saarinen with Alexander Girard. The Eameses designed furniture for it. Dan Kiley did the landscape design. So kind of just a dream team of people working on one project. Uh, the design, building, and maintenance of the home was meticulously documented. So along with the house, the IMA acquired the archive that told the house's story. And my first job was sitting at a flatbed scanner, um, scanning things like pieces of correspondence between Mr. and Mrs. Miller and the architects, um, textile samples that were selected by Alexander Girard for pillows for the now famous conversation pit, um, and architectural drawings. So it was a dream job, dream project, and kind of teed me up perfectly for what I'm doing now at Herman Miller. So next question. Can you explain what the Herman Miller archive looks like and what types of items are included? Well, again, conveniently, I'm here in my office, so I'm gonna take us on a spin and kind of show you guys what's up. We'll go back to the vault, which is where the good stuff is. So bear with me while I figure out my rig. So you guys saw the stacks. Um, in addition to business records, we keep things like catalogs, photography, um, ads from magazines. I love these images of Alexander Girard working on his environmental enrichment panels, him at an opening for a launch of one of his textile lines. Um, you guys can kind of just see the sheer volume of material. Um, and pardon our mess, uh, we were actually planning an archival exhibit for Salone, um, but that did not end up happening this year. So you guys will see more furniture in the vault, but we also have a giant film collection. Charles and Ray Eames were prolific filmmakers, and uh, in addition to designing furniture for Herman Miller, they also liked to make films about the products that they were creating. So films like fiberglass chairs, Sofa Compact. Um, we also worked with the Library of Congress recently to restore the color and sound of those films. So if you go to hermanmiller.com slash why, you can see those films in full. So more canisters. Here is the door to the vault. So I'm gonna swipe us in. Very official. And Ta-da! So this is a more temperature and humidity controlled space. So we keep things like furniture pieces that are more rare um, and you know film negative stuff that needs to be extra safe. You guys can see this beautiful underside of Eames LCWs. Let's set this up, pick another question. Do you ever support Herman Miller, the Herman Miller design team with research for new projects? If so, what types of design projects do you usually get involved in? So we collaborate with teams across the business, um, but one of our biggest clients, so to say, is product development. So when we are looking to reintroduce an archival product, usually that process will start here um, because it's always very likely that we have drawings or even an original piece itself that can be reverse engineered. Um, and brought back uh, into the marketplace. 
Um, I also collaborate a lot with our 2D and 3D designers um, for things like our website and social media. So um, our stuff gets used a, a lot. It's not a dusty archive. Uh, it's probably one of the most vibrant, vibrant parts of the business. Um, so next question. Name a few of your favorite items in the Herman Miller archive. Well, addition, in addition to this very cool bowl, um, I'll show you guys some stuff in the vault. I love this Alexander Girard love seat. Um, this was originally designed for Braniff Airline lounges and then Herman Miller tried to commercialize it. Um, but I think it was just maybe a little too funky looking for people to accept into their homes. But I wish I had one. I also love this desk by Gilbert Rohde um, from the early 1940s. Rohde was actually Herman Miller's first modern designer before George Nelson took the reins um, in the mid 40s. But this desk just feels very now, biomorphic shape. And then my favorite furniture pulls of all time. I'll also show you guys some pieces over here. Um, I feel like this is the history of Herman Miller uh, told through just two pieces of furniture. So the piece on the left is Herman Miller started off as an antique reproduction furniture company, so stuff that was made to look old. So amazing craftsmanship, but just a little too big and uh, not that useful and looks like your grandma's furniture versus uh, this very clean George Nelson case good that came out not too long after we were making this stuff on the left, but uh, very different nonetheless and kind of shows you the evolution of uh, modern furniture design. I also love this particular catalog, um, well-loved catalog. It was designed by Tomoko Miho, who was the head of the graphic design division, oops, um, in George Nelson's office. But these were used by salespeople, obviously, but I love all of the details and the illustrations. Um, Tomoko's art direction was very fun. I love seeing these chairs in motion. Um, it's just a great kind of inspiration for our designers even now, but it's one of my favorite pieces. I'm trying to show you guys, oh yes, the action office. All of these illustrations are pretty special. The wood grain. Um, and the design of this particular catalog was clearly very influential in the design of this book, uh, Herman Miller, Way of Living. So myself and my two co-authors, Sam Graw and Leon Ransmeyer, uh, this was published last year, but it is a monograph about the history of the company, um, told through lots and lots of images that came not only from our own archive, um, but from collections around the world, like the Vitra Design Museum, the Library of Congress, uh, New York Public Library. So we went far and wide to find really cool things uh, to tell the story of Herman Miller, but also sort of the genesis of American modern design. So if you like this talk today, check that out. So I'll go back over here. Oh, I'll show you guys. I, am of course, can't leave out textiles or drawings. So. Alexander Girard was the head of Herman Miller's textile division um, from the early 50s to the early 70s. So today, Maharam, which is a textile company that's part of the Herman Miller family, um, produces Girard textile designs and wall coverings. So today, the product development process includes uh, sometimes referencing these pieces um, to make sure that we are faithfully recreating things. And I personally love all of the ephemera, the different tags, um, and then can't open the flat files without showing you guys the best thing, this exploded view of the Eames Lounge and Ottoman. So every single component that goes into making this iconic piece of furniture. Head over here, do a few more questions. Okay. 
Last one. Do you believe that it is important for designers to look towards designs of the past in order to effectively design for the future? Why or why not? Yes, it's imperative. Um, you have to know where you've been to know where you're going. And in my job, I thankfully get to deal with the history almost every day or every day. And um, usually the problems that designers are trying to solve are what problems that have tried to be solved by other designers before them. So I think having a very robust research practice um, when you're approaching any project is super important so that you have that context. So um, I encourage everyone to use not only design archives, but archives in general um, as part of any creative process. Um, they're full of ideas and they also show you things that didn't work and they tell you why they didn't work so maybe you won't waste the time trying to do something that doesn't work um, thank you to design milk for having me I hope you guys liked this short spin around the archives and thanks <laughs>